We are going to review binomial distribution. The first thing that you have to figure out when you are looking at a problem is whether or not the situation fits all the criteria for a binomial distribution. The first uh, thing that you have to consider is whether each trial has exactly two possible outcomes. So if the scenario has more than that, it can't be binomial. The trials all have to be independent of each other, meaning whatever happens in one trial can't affect the outcome of the second trial. So for example, if I'm flipping a coin, each time I flip that coin, it's a new trial and whatever happened the previous trial isn't going to affect what happens on the next flip. And then the last criteria is that the probability of success has to be the same for every trial, so that can't be changing. Uh, so an example is if I have all these colored marbles in a bag and I'm pulling one out, as long as I'm putting that marble back in before I pull again, my probability of pulling green, let's say, each time is going to be the same. So that would be binomial. But if I uh, take that marble out, then my probability of green would change for the next trial, and so that would not be a binomial distribution. So some of the examples of binomial probability distributions that we've talked about and maybe seen before are hitting a bullseye on a target. Uh, for example, they might ask you what's the probability of doing that eight times in 100 trials, or flipping heads at least 25 times in 50 trials, uh, or thinking about the probability of something being defective, like a water bottle or a battery, uh, a certain amount of times out of, let's say, 100 or 150. All three of those are examples of probability distributions because the trial has two possible outcomes. The outcomes are independent, each trial is independent of each other, <clears throat> excuse me, and then the probability of success is the same for each trial. Now, for most problems, you're going to be using your calculators to help you calculate binomial probability. Um, and so when we look at the next slide here, uh, there's two things in your probability distribution section of your TI-84. The one option is binomial PDF, and the other one is binomial CDF. Remembering that CDF is like cumulative prob probability. So that's uh, the probability of something happening less than or equal to a certain amount of times. Uh, as you guys can see, we have the binomial PDF is the probability of something, let's say, happening exactly eight times in 100 trials. There are no buttons for probability of something being less happening less than five times, more than five times, or greater than or equal to five times. So when that happens, we have to use our critical thinking skills, and we have to be able to rework it in terms of a less than or equal to problem. So let's see what I mean there. So let's look at this example. The first question, and I'm going to just go to zoom in here. Uh, the first question asks us for the expected number of brown eggs. Remember that the expected probability or the expected outcome, uh, E of x, that for binomial distribution is always n times p, which is the number of uh, the number of trials times the probability of success. So in this situation, if there's 240 eggs, that's how many trials there are. And the probability that it is a success, or is brown, is 0.05. And so when we do that, we get the expected number of brown eggs to be 12. Now, the next question says, find the probability that there are 15 brown eggs in the box. What I recommend is go ahead and write that in our notation that we're used to, probability of x being exactly 15, 15 brown eggs exactly out of the 240. So when we want to do that, since it's an exact, exactly 15 brown eggs, not more than, not less than, we're going to do binomial PDF. And if you guys remember, to get there on your graphing calculators, you go to second distribution, which is the VARS button, and you're going to scroll to binomial PDF. And it prompts you, it asks you, how many trials are there? Well, there's 240 trials. What is the probability, P, is the probability of a success? So what's the probability of, it, of one egg being brown? That's 0.05. And then the X value is right here. How many are we wanting to know what is the probability of them being brown? So we want to know if the probability 
what is the probability of 15 exactly being brown? So that's 15 is our x value. And we hit enter, and it actually tells us our probability of exactly 15 eggs being brown is 0 0.0733, rounded to three significant figures. So there's a good example of binomial PDF, but a lot of times they're also going to ask you uh, not just the probability of there being exactly 15 brown eggs, because that's not generally something that we're going to care about. We want to know, let's say, what are the probability that we get at least 10, okay? And so the first thing I'm going to do is write that as an inequality. What is my probability of something being at least 10? Well, that would be a greater than or equal to 10. Now, when I'm thinking about that, I have to find a way to write it as a less than or equal to instead of a greater than or equal to because that's what my calculator can calculate for us. So when we look at that, I'm just going to write this out. So there could be zero eggs brown, there could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and so on. So the probability of having at least ten eggs, that's ten or more. That's the probability that we actually want to find. However, since we can only do probability of less than or equal to, we're going to have to do this as a complement. So could we find the probability of there being 9 or less? And then we can go ahead and do 1 minus that to take the complement. So I am going to rewrite my inequality. Instead of saying probability of x being greater than or equal than 10, we are going to say that we can definitely find the probability of it being less than or equal to 9, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for 10 or more, so we're going to have to take the complement, 1 minus the probability of 9 or less. Okay, so we're finding first, what's the probability of there being 9 or less, and then saying, well, the probability of there being 10 or more would just be the complement. So in my graphing calculator, I'm going to second distribution again. And this time, since I have a cumulative distribution, right, we're looking at 9 or less, I'm going to binomial CDF. The number of trials is still 240. The probability of success is still 0.05. But the x value that we're going to enter is 9 because, remember, we're doing less than or equal to. When I do that, I get that to be 0.23567. And that's the probability of there being 9 or less, but we want to know the probability of there being 10 or more, so I'm going to do the complement. I'm going to do 1 minus that. And I get that the probability of there being at least 10 brown eggs, I get that to be 0.764, and that's to three significant figures. That's my final probability of there being 10 brown eggs or more. So that is what we're going to have to do whenever they give us a problem that's not x is less than or equal to. We're going to have to find a way to work around that. So, so let's go ahead and uh, scroll here, and we're going to look at another example. The first problem, again, says find the expected number of questions Jose answers correctly. So in order to do that, uh, we are going to say that, well, if it's a binomial probability... Uh, sorry about that. If it's a binomial probability, we can use that formula, e of x equals n times p. Before I use that formula, I better check and see if this is a binomial distribution. It says a multiple choice test consists of 10 questions. Each question has five answers. Only one answer is correct. For each question, Jose randomly chooses one of the five answers. So he's choosing randomly, okay? So the probability of him being correct every time is going to be 1 in 5. So this is a binomial distribution because uh, each trial has two outcomes. He's either right or he's wrong. Uh, it, each, each question is independent of the previous question because he's choosing randomly. So whatever he chooses on the, the previous question doesn't affect what he chooses on the next one. Uh, and then the last one being that the probability of him choosing the right one is the same every time. So we can go ahead and use this formula. The number of questions is 10, so that's 10 trials. And the probability of being correct is 1 out of 5. And so that gives us our expected number of questions to be right being 2 questions. 
Then it asks us to find the probability that he answers exactly three questions correctly. So I have to ask myself, I've already decided it's binomial, uh, it's a binomial distribution. So I have to ask myself, am I using binomial PDF or binomial CDF? And if it says exactly three questions, that's equals three, which is binomial PDF. Okay, and so we're going to go into our second distribution in our graphing calculators, use binomial PDF. And where it says trials, that's another way of saying how many questions are we doing. That's 10. The probability of success, we said, is one out of five. And then how many questions are it? Are we finding the probability of him getting right? Well, we want to know what's the probability of him getting three right, so that's our x. And we get that his probability of getting exactly three questions right is 0.201 to three sig figs. The next question is a little more complicated. It says find the probability that Jose answers more than three questions correctly. So again, just like on the last problem, the first thing I want to do is write it out in the proper notation. More than three would be x's greater than 3. Now again, knowing that uh, this is, you know, in our graphing calculators, it only does less than or equal to, we're going to have to go ahead and figure out what we should use to use the complement. So let's see, in terms of questions he can get right, he might get any number of questions from 0 to 10 correct. Uh, and what we're trying to find out is what's the probability that he answers more than 3. So I'm going to just go ahead and circle more than three would be any of these options. So in order to do the complement, I'm going to do all the rest, less than or equal to three. So I can find what's the probability of x being less than or equal to three, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for four or more, so I'm going to do one minus that and take the complement. So I'm going to go into my binomial CDF. My number of trials is 10, probability of success is 1 out of 5, and then my x value I'm using is 3, and that tells me what's my probability of getting 3 or less, correct, and that is 0.879126, and so the probability of getting more than that correct would be the complement, 1 minus and that gives us 0.121 when you round to three sig figs. Okay, I did not mean to draw that line there. This is my first time using this new program, so I know you will bear with me. Um, okay, so looking at this last problem, What's the probability of obtaining exactly two heads versus what's the probability of obtaining at least two heads? I want you to try that. Go ahead and pause this now, and then when you come back, you can check your answer. Okay, so uh, when you are looking at the probability of obtaining heads on a biased coin, where the probability is 0.18, the coin is tossed seven times. In order to find the probability of it obtaining exactly two heads, that's going to be a binomial PDF, because it's exact, uh, with the number of trials being seven, the probability of success being 0.18, and then the x value is going to be two, so that gives us 0.252. And then when we look at the probability of obtaining at least two heads, uh, I first wrote that in my mathematical notation, probability of x being greater than or equal to 2. Knowing that we have to get it to less than or equal to, I went ahead and drew that out. So greater than or equal to 2 would be 2 or more. So I'm going to find the probability of 1 or less. So probability of x is less than or equal to 1. That's probability distribution where the number of trials is 7, probability is 0.18, and then the x value is 1 and you get 0.632 is the probability of getting one or less. So to find your probability of getting two or more, you take the complement, one minus that, and you get 0.368. Hopefully you have gotten a refresher on binomial distributions, how to tell if it's a binomial distribution, so when to use it, uh, how to find the expected value for binomial distributions, 
and then how to use your calculator function to do a binomial PDF or a binomial CDF to find the probability of, of having exactly a certain amount of successes or having at least a certain amount of successes or less than a certain amount of its successes in a certain amount of trials. If you want some extra practice problems, go ahead and go on to your Dropbox and uh, the Dropbox link has some extra problems and feel free to come see me with questions.